So what we have here is my John Deere 310J backhoe. I was going to use my backhoe as a safety device under my bifold door on my hanger here. I was working on it the other day. It's way up at the top there. When you open these doors, they fold in half and there's a gap up in between there and there's cables and pulleys up there. And I was afraid of the door falling on me, so I wanted to put the backhoe up under the door. Anyway, I had it outside the door, ready to start the job, and it wouldn't start. Weirdest thing. It felt like it was seized. It was the weirdest thing. Anyway, to rule out there was the, that the battery wasn't the problem, I put a boost on it. I had my car over here, and I ran the car. Three, four tries, it started turning a little bit better, and the engine caught, and it did run, but it, was, it struggled for a bit. And then after it ran, I, uh, the parking brake wouldn't come off and the transmission didn't have any gears. So I had to uh, kibosh the uh, tobacco and went to plan B for the door. So later on that night, I did a little bit of look on, looking around on the net and I found out that you can uh, take the parking brake off. I needed to move this thing. It was stuck out in front of my door. So anyway, what you can do on these things is you can undo these lock nuts right here, and there's one over here, and you screw those bolts in all the way, that'll release the parking brake. It's a spring brake, and the hydraulics normally takes it off. So that's the pressure switch up at the top there. I read a little bit about that, that if you disconnect that, that and you put a, a jumper across that connector there, it'll trick the transmission into thinking there's pressure in there, and if it may go into gear. In my case, it didn't go into gear, even after trying all this. So the next thing I did is I took the uh, oil filter off completely and uh, started it up and nothing came out. So, oh boy, that's when I knew I was in big trouble. So the next thing I did is I looked online and I found a manual. I bought a, lot, a manual, two manuals, $48. You get the troubleshooting manual and the maintenance manual for this machine. It's not a bad deal. I had a John Deere 310A like 35, 40 years ago, whatever it was, and I bought the manual and it was 300 bucks. It was a paper copy, of course, but uh, I never had to open it. I, uh, I kind of looked through it when I first got it, but nothing ever broke on that old machine. Anyway... Then I looked on YouTube and I saw a guy had a 310K, similar to this. He had hydraulic problems. He had his transmission out twice. He did it in his driveway. He had blocks under the wheels and he used a car jack. He struggled to get that thing out of there, but he did it. And he rebuilt the, the transmission and I don't know whether he got it running or not, but he put it all back in there too. Anyway, about 35 years ago, I bought this here transmission jack. I used it 20 years ago the last time. I had to take a uh, transmission out of an auger truck that I used for putting some buildings up around here to change the release bearing. So it's been sitting in the barn, but it still works. So I read the book. It tells you that you gotta lift it up 37 inches. Well, I should have lifted it up a little bit more because my jack doesn't go quite down to the floor as far as the, uh, the John Deere jack I would imagine I had to go in through the door with my engine crane and drop it drop the transmission down to the floor and I dragged it out it, uh, it wasn't too hard to move the back end here I, uh, I don't know whether you can see it but down in there I bolted these pieces of wood on first I put a screw in with a plate to hold that top beam in there so that when I was jack after I was trying to put the blocks in I wouldn't have to reach up in there to get that one in last so that was already in there it's up here pretty stable I don't know what it is about this machine though it's only got 3500 hours on it I had to uh, if I lifted up the back end first I couldn't get the back the front end off the ground so Anyway, I lifted the front end up a whole bunch and then lifted it up at the back until it was level to try and get these blocks in. I don't know whether that's normal or not.
It's got some other strange things going on in this thing too. I'm gonna have to address later on. So, I kind of followed the book on how to get it out of here. I took the, uh, I drained all the, uh, I drained the transmission and I drained all the main hydraulic system. I took the pump off and uh, wrapped a rope around it and dropped it down the floor. There's the, uh, there's the uh, inlet hose for the main pump and there's the, uh, the outlet hose right there. So it's kind of straightforward. You take the bolts out of the flex plate, you know, normal stuff. You take the, get the bolts out of the flex plate and then you take the drive shafts off. The front drive shaft was pretty hard. I used a quarter inch, eight millimeter socket with a half inch impact gun on it to get those undone. And the rear drive shaft, they were 11 millimeter, 12 point, three eighths drive with a half inch impact gun on it to get those ones off as well. This thing's all been out of here before. It's got 3,500 hours, like I say, and it's uh, it's been out. Everything's marked. It's got tags all over, tags all over the electrical and tags on the plumbing. Now, in order to take the uh, the transmission out, you got to support the engine. So they they give you instructions in the book. Tell you to put some one inch spacers in here and tighten them up. I just kind of left it down an inch. And uh, I'm gonna actually drop it down a little more. There's about a half inch before uh, the exhaust system hits on the hydraulic tank up there in the engine compartment. And I'm gonna let it down until it just about touches because you see these two bolts way up at the top on the bell housing there? There's two of them up there. The manual tells you that you might need a flex socket or something to get at them. Well, I'm here to tell you that oil tank is seven inches and it tells you to go in for the floor up there. Well, you can't see them, you can't touch them. I used a snap-on 5 8 3 8 drive flex socket on a three-foot extension with a half-inch impact gun on it. <laughs> they did come undone. I think maybe that John Deere and Falcon Jet have the same engineering. They went to the same school because they build, that's all Falcon Jets put together. No one, they're not made to work on them, that's for sure. Anyway, those uh, brackets holding the electrical on there, they're coming off because they weren't hooked up anyway. There's one there and there's one over there. And I'm gonna change that hydraulic line. That's, uh, that's going to the oil cooler. It's got some chafing going on there before I put it all back together. Anyway, it's kind of hard to get it out of there. When you slide it back a little bit, the transmission hits on these mounts. You got like a quarter of an inch of clearance to get that thing out of there. So you got to be careful lowering it down. But anyway, if I can get it out of there, anybody can do it. Not a lot of room in here. You get it up this high off the ground, it's just right for me. So after you get the transmission out there, I was couldn't get the torque converter off. Normally a torque converter just slides off of that shaft there. Well, I had to get wood and put it in there and wiggle it back and forth. It took about an hour wiggling back and forth to get that off because these pieces were jammed down in there inside the pump. Anyway, in order to remove the pump from the transmission, you gotta take the bowel housing off. these bolts all inside here and that thing was held on there oh man you're supposed to use a, a Loctite anaerobic sealant I think this is Permatex it's a, like a silicone I don't think that's this that's I don't think that's the Loctite anaerobic sealant on there that was a bear same as the case getting it apart it was pretty hard anyway to take the uh, the case apart you got to take all these bolts out all around the case here and you put a chain on it you put a chain on that put some weight on it with an engine crane hanging on the hanging on there and supposed to tap it with a mallet well I had to use some wedges and they say to take the dowel pins out there's a dowel pin here that one drove out okay but the other dowel pin it's captive 
You can't drive it out. I was beating the shit out of it. Good thing I didn't break the case. Anyway, you just give it a little bit of top on the uh, the front wheel drive output shaft at the end and, uh, and it comes free. So after you get the case split, you can go to the other side of this thing and you, you take the bearing race out because there's two bolts in behind there and then two more and then you can take the pump off. So as I showed before, there's, the drive tang is broken on the, uh, on the torque converter and there's no drive. There's nothing in here to drive that. The, the tang, whatever that tang used to drive, it's gone. One piece of this gear, if you put all these pieces back in, there's one missing. You put them all back in there, there's, there's not enough to fill the holes. So, I don't know whether that's an aftermarket pump or whether that's a John Deere pump or not. I have, I have no clue. I won't know until I get the new one. You see, this, uh, this machine here was, uh, it was owned by or serviced by RDO equipment. And I looked them up. Apparently they sell aftermarket parts and this has got aftermarket part number it's got their part number on the uh, torque converter so I would imagine they changed the pump at the same time now, I don't know much about it but I do know that when you type in a part number for something like you take the John Deere part number and you type in it on the internet and it Amazon shows up and eBay shows up and Alibaba shows up for three hundred dollars for a twenty five hundred dollar part it's kind of tempting, but you know you got a piece of shit when that happens, I can tell you. Anyway, so to rule out the, uh, the pressure relief valve maybe have caused the problem and overpressured the system or something, I took the pressure, it goes in that hole there and there's all the parts. And the manual tells you that if you, if you take that stuff out or you change any parts in there, you got to check the pressure. Well, you got to put it all back together, install it in the tractor with all these things on there. What were they thinking? Like, are these, I think that must be something that Falcon Jet did, or John Deere and them guys got together on this because maybe they should have put the pressure relief valve on the outside where you could actually get at it. That'd be a, a real surprise. ZF transmissions, they make transmissions for everything. You think, and it's a German company, so I don't know. I drive, I drive Volkswagen diesels. I like them. They don't break down very often, but I'm surprised that they would put anything on there like that. Anyway, the only other thing I was questioning is that, uh, you know, this thing isn't very high pressure. Everything in it's hydraulic. This whole transmission is like nine solenoids operating clutch packs, the front wheel drive, the differential lock, the parker brake, everything's hydraulic on it. And, uh, so I was wondering about the uh, the filter. The filter's only good for like 300 pounds pressure. So if you got the pump here, and this is the pump outlet, and it comes out here and it goes through the oil filter, you'd think that maybe the oil filter should blow up before the pump would break. That would be my thought. I thought that the, uh, the main reason for changing the pumps on these things is when they get like 10,000 hours on it and the parking brake won't come off because it's got low pressure, not because it's broken. Anyway, I'm going to put it back together with the new parts and I'm going to start it up with a pressure gauge on it and I'll make another video and maybe I'll, uh, I'll talk about the uh, other things that for troubleshooting this if anybody runs into the same problem because I've, I've been reading a whole bunch about this thing here and I've, I've read the theory on how it's supposed to work. So maybe it'll save somebody some trouble if they end up with the same problem. Anyway, have a good day. And I'm going to wait for my parts. <laughs>